Hey everyone, so today I have here, this is a MacBook Air. Let me log in real quick, actually for it. All right, so we have a MacBook Air, very nice. Still, it's a little bit of an older one, but still a very nice machine. And now we have a problem with this one, it does random restarts. And I'm gonna catch it actually as it's doing random restart because I saw what was going on with it. And um, this is a little bit of an older one. It does take uh, the MagSafe 1, so it is a pretty much an older one. But I'm making this video because I did see something that was pretty interesting with this type of laptop and what actually is going on and why it's randomly restarting and something you guys should actually know. So I'm going to actually just wait for this to happen because it, it happens pretty quickly. I already did see it and everything. I'm just going to go show you guys when it happens and why it's happening. Whoa. And here it goes. There it is. See that? And it's going to randomly restart. Well, not randomly, but it will restart. You see all those lines and everything? It just kind of corrupted itself there. And it's going to actually just kick and restart. But you see there's a big, nice glitch there. And I even tried to go to the website. You can see it at the top there. But it's frozen. And this isn't a, a problem with the screen. Uh, it's not a video issue. Uh, it is a problem. There it goes. So it did, it did, it's going to restart itself there. And watch. It's gonna come, go. Ready to shut off. I don't know if it'll come back. Oh, it actually just shut off. Okay. So, what's the problem with this? Why did this happen? Why did it happen so soon? I actually waited maybe within two minutes or so. It did actually happen there. Now, I did open it up. I did take a look at the back there, and I did see that there is a problem actually even trying to access the data i try to run this on another machine as well because we just want to at least get the data off at least for the client because it's a little bit over older one we don't want to fix it we just mainly want to get the data i was having a problem still even when i plugged in the hard drive to another device and it was still giving me uh the same problem as exactly the one i was having here so what's the problem with this one so what's the problem with this one uh you can see actually looking at this see this drive this is an aftermarket SSD that's in this device here. And what should be in here would be uh, this one. This is usually the Toshiba SSDs that do go in here as well. But what's really the point? Why am I really talking about this? What's really the difference? Why does it really matter? Um, this is just some pretty much random brand here. It's actually pretty warm. And this is, this is an aftermarket SSD that's in there. And why that's important because um, for these ones, you're supposed to have either there's usually like a Toshiba or a Samsung depending on the year on them in here and they have a certain uh, a style of SSD that actually does fit oh actually this one is the wrong one too okay so I do have one actually this is supposed to be a Samsung one you see it has the same type of shape so when you have um, any type of like uh, SSD especially for Mac Macs usually have a specific SSD that's inside them especially on the older ones that they're actually removable and some people, what they want to do is they want to upgrade it. They maybe want to go storages that are past the official one. Sometimes I think they can max out maybe like a terabyte. Some people want to put in like a two terabyte. Some people just want maybe cheaper storage. Um, it's an option that they want to actually do. And uh, we don't actually recommend that. And obviously Apple isn't going to recommend that as well because it's not an Apple original part. The controller is different. The drivers can be different. It can, and it can give you lots of other issues, especially when you're installing the later OSs that can do hardware checks such as like Big Sur or Monterey. When you're doing an installation, it can give a problem. And you don't want to have this problem, especially when, when you have your data um, that's important to you that can be lost as well. So you always want to try to use um, official um, uh, Apple SSDs here. And we see we have two of them here that are very similar looking, at least the shape is. But uh, the Samsung one here that I have here is an original part. And this is just a random name drive that's on another one. Now, the flash isn't going to be quite the same. The, the, the controller can be a little bit different as well. And there's lots of other things that may be um, in Apple's walled garden that it's maybe not going to be optimal. It's not going to be optimal for. Or maybe the controller might have communication problems with Mac OS. There could be lots of other things going on with it. So anytime you ever have these type of situations, um, you always want to make sure that you replace it with an original part. Now what we have to do is we have to do also a data recovery on here because accessing the OS is giving a problem as well. And not just to say that this isn't just uh, obviously um, an aftermarket SSD that has a hardware issue. And plus, the especially the aftermarket ones, especially they're going to be cheaper, the flash isn't going to be as good as, um, as a Samsung one or even a Toshiba one because they're obviously not 
um, they're, they're cheaper alternatives and they're alternatives and you don't want to use cheaper alternatives on something as, as important as your data, especially if you have maybe one document on there, it's going to make it a lot more difficult and then you have to go for data recovery and you, you risk actually losing your data or potentially corrupting your data as well. So for this one, we're going to have to do uh, data recovery on that. Stay tuned for that. I want to make a video about that as well, about doing data recovery on this one on a Mac SSDs. We actually do have some on our channel if you wanted to go ahead and check it out. But a good fix for at least for the machine would be to replace it with a regular SSD. Even though the customer is mainly just focused on really getting the data off, that's really what we want to focus on. But you see how important it is to replace it always with an original, genuine Apple SSD. So, um, and just try to use original parts as much as you possibly can. Apple does make it very, very difficult for shops to get uh, parts, especially original parts for it. So that's usually why you see um, people going to get alternatives for that and then this kind of happens so you don't really know exactly what's going on why it's happening there um but we have to let the customer know and see what we could do and see uh what we can do to get the data off stay tuned for a future video on that so anyways guys just a quick little talking point that i want to talk about about mac ssds and using original apple parts as best you possibly can obviously it's a little bit harder to get one get some especially that they make it very difficult for shops to get in general but hope you guys are watching if you did please like really just help us a lot subscribe for more content see you guys next video take care